All right, folks, so today we're going to talk about Newzella. Uh, just to give you a little background on who I am, uh, my name is Matt McCow. I teach 7th grade language arts at Wadley Middle School here. And Newzella is a program that I have been using for five years now. It has evolved, uh, it's developed a lot of new features uh, in the time that I've been using it, but it's something that I think is essential to my instruction. It's something that my students enjoy using, and it's something that, that I value highly as, as part of the curriculum of what we do. Um, so, just to give you an idea of what it is, um, it's a database of articles featuring news and current events. But to really limit to that uh, would be doing it a disservice because there is a lot of options in the database. Um, they offer all sorts of things. I'm going to talk you through some of the different options, uh, but primarily they update daily their articles. Um, gives you a pretty good idea of what's going on in the world, what's important here and now. Um, so it's a tool to enhance literacy and comprehension, but it also has a lot of uh, connections to other academic content areas and, and lots of support for test prep and other things of that nature. So let's get into kind of the nuts and bolts of it. So some of the tools that are available in New Zealand, you can adjust the lexile so every student is reading the same article. A lexile that is appropriate to them that matches their reading level which is really, it's amazing. In, in my classes, I generally, in seventh grade, have lexiles spanning from 800 or below all the way up to 13 or 1400, which is a very broad range. Um, generally, somewhere between 950 to, to 1100 is what the creators of the lexile would say is, is typical or standard for seventh grade. And so you, that just gives you an idea of how broad the range is. But with this tool, with Newzell, I can have all of them read the same information on Newzella, and then they can still talk about it, they can answer questions about it, they can do any sort of activity they would ask them, but the test text itself is that Alexa where they can comprehend it and appreciate what's happening. Some of the newer features, um, I'll show up in these later bullet points, the power words, um, that's just a fancy way of saying vocabulary words, it's vocabulary support to help students boost their vocabulary, uh, boost their comprehension, it really helps them out. So with those, those are embedded in the, in the text of the articles, and they can click on them and get more information about them and do activities with the power words. Uh, for somebody who might be teaching in a bilingual setting or have students uh, who English is their second language, it has Spanish text for, for bilingual students, and it has lots of connections uh, to help support and facilitate a better understanding of the English language for those students who maybe aren't as familiar or aren't as comfortable with it. Uh, one of the ones that I use frequently, I ask my students to highlight and annotate the text. Um, one of the ways that we use that specifically is uh, we have a color-coded system uh, that comes with our writing curriculum. And so I'll ask them to go in and read an article and then I'll say, highlight all the places where you see the main idea, highlight it in green. Or all the supporting details or the key details, highlight those in yellow, or anything that is text evidence, or an example, or proof that supports an argument, highlight that in red. And so students can really get their hands on the different pieces and parts of the article. They can see how great writers organize their writing, and that's something that I, I think really helps students from a comprehension standpoint, but also from a writing standpoint, because they get to see the, the nitty-gritty of how authors are organizing their, their text. So, like I said, with, with the highlighting and annotating, the ability to color code things is huge for us. It's, it's one of the features that I use most frequently with my students. And then lastly, progress monitoring uh, is an option because there are quizzes. Each article comes with level four question quizzes. So if you adjust the Lexile, the quiz questions are essentially the same, uh, but they, they also adjust the Lexile of those quiz questions as well. And so that's something that you could use for progress monitoring um, to make sure the students are making progress. So for me personally, I generally assign an article if the students become familiar with the program. The second time we, we read an article, highlight and annotate, we'll take the quiz and I'll record that score just as baseline data. And then I can use that to see, are you making progress? Are there certain types of, of writing that you're struggling with because of the different uh, options on your cell? And so that's something that I use frequently for progress monitoring of my students, specifically with the nonfiction text or the informational text. So, just a few uh, examples of the tools at work. You can see highlighting text here. So, 
there are four different color options that you can highlight with Newzella. If you just highlight um, over in the right hand margin, you'll see four color options pop up and you just click on one. So I believe the color options are green, yellow, red, and blue. So there's a lot of different things you can do with four different colors of highlighting. In addition to the highlighting, you can write notes in the right hand margin. Um, so sometimes what I'll ask students to do is just simply label it. If you highlight a green, label it as a main idea. If you highlight it in yellow, label it as a, a supporting detail or a key detail. If you highlight it in red, tell us this text evidence and maybe even add in an explanation of how does that prove or support uh, what the author is saying or what your argument is. Uh, here at the top uh, is just a screenshot of the toolbar and the title of an article that I assigned recently in my class. So you can see uh, right here where it says big red arrow, adjust the lexile. You can see right now the lexile is 1190. If you click on that, it's a drop down menu. You can adjust that. Um, usually it typically has four different lexile settings spanning anywhere from elementary to high school. Uh, different articles have different lexiles, slightly different lexile settings. Um, so I simply ask my students to write down their lexile or memorize their lexile. And obviously I keep it uh, myself as a, a safeguard. But I'll just tell them, adjust it to your lexile. I'll check and make sure they're all doing that. And that way the students are reading at their own lexile. Um, up here you can also see there's a Spanish button. There's an activities button. That's where the quizzes, that's where the power words. Um, and they've newly added the ability to write a summary, an objective summary about what they've read. Um, and this blue button up here is teacher specific. If you have a teacher account, you can click the assign button and assign it to your class. Obviously students, they don't have that ability to assign articles to their peers or, or to other people. Um, and so this last screenshot is just, um, I, I clicked on the activities button and this is what it shows you. You've got different activities. So the power words would be like the vocabulary activities. Writing would be the summary that I just alluded to. And then lastly, they can take one of those four question quizzes that I mentioned previously as well. So some of the strengths of Newzella, it is free. Okay? Not all of its features come with the free version. You can also sign up. Um, you, can all, you get a 30-day free trial. And then after that, uh, they do have other options that come with uh, a paid subscription. But I've used the free for five years now, I think, and I found it to be very sufficient. I, I have no complaints uh, with the free version. Um, the ability to adjust the lexile and the, the ability to change um, the difficulty of the text and the quiz questions, that's a great way to, to differentiate and, and kind of support kids at their respective level. And so I really like to be able to do that on New Zealand. Third, there, there are great cross-curricular connections. And obviously, the ability to read and comprehend text is a skill that is essential in life. It shows up in almost every discipline, every subject or content area in, in a student's schedule. So it has access to math and science, history, economics, politics, current events, traditional literature. There, there's even more than that. And so I, I find myself talking with the social studies teachers quite frequently and saying, hey, what are you guys learning about in social studies? Because I can always find an article that is related to the topic that they're talking about in social studies. And so that helps uh, make those cross-curricular connections for students and, and reinforce the things that they're learning in other topics. Um, I said I use history of social studies quite frequently. Um, you can also do that with science. There's a whole bunch of uh, science-related things, environmental articles, things, things like that. And it's even beneficial for language arts. If we read a story that's maybe fictional about a certain group of people, for example, um, we read lots of African-American literature, and on New Zealand there's a, a number of articles about the Underground Railroad and the slave trade and things of that nature that students can maybe get more background information on the things that we're reading. And so that's something, the cross-curricular connections that I really, really appreciate. And then lastly, the, the accountability and the progress monitoring through the quizzes and through the summaries, that really helps me have a better understanding of are the students getting it. And I thought this quote at the bottom here was, was very appropriate. Um, so, as it says, just as consumers know that a one-size-fits-all won't work when buying a pair of jeans, educators know that one standard approach to teaching will not meet the needs of all, or even most students. Without an attempt to vary instruction to meet the individual needs of each student, the curriculum is bound to bore some and baffle others. And I think that really is just, in a nutshell, the strength 
of Newzella. It does a great job of meeting each learner where they're at in a way that's engaging and challenging and interesting. So just to give you some more ideas of, of the functions of Newzella, um, there's a pair of screenshots here. So there's, there's a line here dividing these. Um, I just wanted to show you the different drop-down menus. So you've got in the news section different categories, war and peace, money, kids, science, law, health, art, sports. Those are all different types of articles. If you click on one, you can see what pops up. They, they get a little um, thumbnail view of the article with its title, its category, and, and a picture. If they click on that, then obviously it opens up the article. Over here you see the library broken down uh, by, by subject. So art and culture, science and math, religion and philosophy. You can see there's a whole list of things here. Uh, really, there's, there's a myriad of options, and it just continues to grow. As Newzella adds more articles, their databases grow and grow and grow. One of the things that I found to be really cool is they do uh, text sets. You can see that up here. And so that's uh, a group of articles that relate to a, a similar theme or, or a certain topic. So, for example, um, around Halloween, I like to assign a text set centering around Halloween. They've got articles on um, Halloween spending, traditions, the origins of Halloween. And so there's a lot that you can do with Newzella, and, and some of these features in the tool, toolbar and tool menu are outstanding, and I highly recommend them. So those are my references. I wanted to take a few minutes and just show you what Newzella looks like. So this is the main screen. Um, the first time that students navigate here, they're going to click Join. And you'll see it says to enter a class code. So as a teacher, I can beforehand create a class. You can make as many classes as you need. And then each class can have its own unique class code. And that way I could assign Article A to my first class and Article B to my second class. Maybe I have um, a seventh grade and an eighth grade class, and I can assign different articles to them. And so that class code is really simple to get kids signed up and, and help them get in. Uh, once they've signed in once, then they just click the sign in button. And one of my favorite headache eliminators is the sign in with Google button. If you just click the sign in with Google button, it might ask you to pick which account, and then you can sign in directly to Newzella. And when you get in, you'll see this home page with a lot of the different things um, that I was just talking about. And so each day, it, it resets what articles they have available to you. So you can see um, just you know latest news, different ideas. They have a feature article, and obviously that's the big one right here. And then it also, really cool feature, has suggestions. So based on other things that you've assigned, based on other activities that you've given to your class, you can look through these suggestions and find maybe other articles that you weren't aware of. One of the things that I have students use, um, there's also a search bar. So you click it, you can type in what you want to search for. It even gives you suggested searches. So that's a great way if, if you are looking at for, as a teacher, looking for an article or a topic, you can just search it and see what pops up. Um, so I've had students use that to, if they're lost, if they can't find the article that I assigned to them, um, I've had students who simply type it into the search bar and they can find it. One of the things that, that I appreciate um, is the binder. Um, for me as a teacher, I click on Binder, I can see all the assignments that I've given them, I can see the activity, uh, it gives me a breakdown of how many students have accessed it, it gives me a breakdown of how much time they've spent on it, it gives me information about their scores and how they're performing on the assessments that I've assigned to them, and so that's really beneficial. So if I open up my class, you can see in the final ELA, you can see that I've got students in here, it shows you some of the articles that I've assigned recently, and then each summer, obviously, you get new, new students most every year. You can archive classes and create new ones so that you're not overloaded with hundreds or thousands of articles as you use this year after year. So those are some of the features that I prefer the most. Um, just in summary, Newzella is a great tool for differentiation. It's a great tool because it has a little bit of everything, in a sense, and so you can meet students where they're at, and engage them with topics that they might find interesting. And so I, I strongly recommend using Newzella. Do you guys have any questions for me or anything you want me to walk through again? All right, thanks for being here today, folks.